Yes. Had five remediation wells on it for oil spillage. Had been remediated. I could not prove the level of remediation, except for say they're pretty close to getting a final letter from the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. But regardless, they have these ugly wells sitting there. And people pull up to, if you put this house for sale, I don't want to touch this house. I don't know what's there and so forth. So it has a stigma. The, so it surely detracts from value and marketability. The question is, what percentage does it detract from marketability? Is there a repository somewhere where court opinions have been rendered, where we can look to that says, at this particular stage of a cleanup, there's a percentage of loss? There are independent, certain trial lawyers have access to certain reporting services, which do take data from specific cases and assemble them in various ways. So certain trial lawyers might have access to that kind of information. Very, it depends on what lawyer you know and what they subscribe to. These are subscription services. But more generally, every decision just about, okay, it's very hard to start out with every and then use the word just about because it sort of <laughs> suggests it's not every. But many, many decisions today are available on the internet through these services called Westlaw and Lexis that lawyers use uh, all the time. So in the old days, uh, when, when we started out, really the only thing that was available were what they called published decisions, which were actually published in books. They used to have these reporter series, and they were published in books. That's why they used to call them published decisions. That, that's what it meant. It was actually put in a book. Now, they call it public. They say a decision is for publication, or they say it's not for publication. But it's a distinction without a difference, because almost every legal decision is now available on the internet through these general subscription services called Westlaw and Lexis. A skilled lawyer might be able to do a search of the Westlaw and Lexis data bank and be able to get some of that information that way as well. So there's no, it's no easy answer to that question, but through research, some people might be able to get something like that. Yes, sir. I mean, the, why don't you finish? You had another question. You, this goes to court, my case. Uh huh. And I win based upon what I said. Yes. That, that gives me further ammunition for the next case. Am I correct? as to what the, ju what the judge accepted as being... Well, you know, it's, no, interesting. It, it, it's, it's interesting because uh, in theory, right, every case really stands, you look at in its own four, within the, its own four corners of its fact pattern. And, and generally speaking, especially in your world, you know, you really have to start with kind of a clean slate and figure out what you have, right? But that's, that's, the, con that's the theory. But the fact of the matter is, judges are people, and they are motivated and influenced by what they've done before. And so the reality might very well be that while there shouldn't be a carryover from one case to another, there is. So I, I think it would give you a little bit of an edge, you know, but not enough edge that I'd be, you know, open up a new bank account, getting ready to cash in on the next big decision. But yeah, it could give you an edge, though. Well, yes. aren't those decisions actually based on testimony that would be specific to a specific case, and 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 it's still going to be based on comparable sales data at some point, whether you had to go back three years to see what the market was prior to the contamination or whatever or timeline. So yeah. to say that there would be some place you could look it up and say, I know they're going to lose 10% based on this court case would be ridiculous. No, well, well, I would say it's I ridiculous. Mean, but, but the thing is something to fall back on to back up what you've done, maybe, or to that, First of all, it gives you, it gives, gives you credibility. Right. It gives you credibility. So that's number one. But no, but you know, the, the thing is, um, when you're looking at stigma, uh, you're never going to have an identical fact pattern where you could say this exactly happened here, so therefore that must lead to another, the same conclusion here because and no two properties are, are going to be the, exactly the same. There's going to be differences. But there might be enough similarities that you can start drawing some reasonable conclusions about how they are similar and make some comparisons that are valuable, don't you think? big radon problem, did not create any market change at all. The neighborhood stayed solidified. The houses sold for the same price. They did their disclosure. Mm. Nothing happened to create any kind of stigma. You know what the first symptom of radon poisoning is? 
the inability to make good appraisal decisions. <laughs> that's exactly the first symptom. It's, it's the oddest thing. I don't know what it is. It's the first thing that happens. <laughs> so concerned about losing their value because it was very upscale yeah. uh -huh. that some houses did have monitoring wells, others were clean, clean and it's a stream that's traveling through the, through the municipality. Yeah. But they're outside of the fact that they had to disclose, which was normal, right. there has been no market adjustment. What county? Monmouth. Oh, Monmouth County, huh? So everybody know, I mean, the thing about radon, Sinkovich over here and I are doing a big radon case right now. We have a big, big case in... Uh, Warren County. In, in, all the way in West Jersey, you know, all the way like near Pennsylvania. It's nice, it takes us seven or eight hours to get there. <laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> if you leave early enough, you might get there before it's dark. But anyway, the thing about it is uh, radon, is an interesting issue. Uh, it's a really, really interesting issue, and it's interesting from an appraising standpoint, too. Anybody know what the number two cause of lung cancer is in this country? Everybody know? It's, it's radon. Radon, radon. Smoking is number one. Smoking is number one, and radon is number two. And, and nobody, people generally don't appreciate that and, and don't really understand what a big deal it is. Radon is comes from the rock formations. And you, you either kind of have it or you don't, depending on the characteristics of what's underneath your house. Right, it's naturally occurring. So it's a little different than if there was a discharge of a hazardous substance or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Who knows what's found in kitchens that, le that has radon? Anybody know? Yes. Yeah. yeah the, gra the granite countertops have been problematic, yeah. So when you're... Uh, Spouse is begging you to get a new granite countertop. That might be a way to save some money. You know? <laughs> well, we could get one, <laughs> but <laughs> the um, what? Did, by the way, there are some companies that are testing granite to to find out whether it has a high level or not. So that's that's a it's that, that's starting to do that now. By the way, not just granite. All all these things, marble, anything that comes out of the ground can have this problem. They're having problems with marble too. But granite's the one you hear about most for some reason. I guess it's because what people have most. I don't know why. It's the most popular, yeah. I know we, my wife had to go and she went to this big yard and they had different funny names, like different names of the marbles that I don't even know what it was called and she had to pick one out. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> oh my God, don't ever be with my wife when she's shopping for a new kitchen. Just try to write that memo to the file. Okay.